afternoon, everyone. I'm Dan Hussey with Zaner Ag Hedge, bringing you a strategy of the day update here for November 1st, 2021. Uh, want to begin, let's take a look at the dollar index. We talk about the dollar index often because it is one of the biggest factors for uh, driving export markets, whether it's wheat, corn, beans, oil, uh, any type of U.S. market uh, or, or commodity that is priced in U.S. dollars, uh, export partners that come to buy those commodities need to do so in U.S. dollars. So trading that U.S. dollar for foreign currencies, uh, that swap ends up uh, being uh, traded out here via the dollar index. So it's a good index we can watch to see what that relative value of the currency is. And, and as the do dollar index weakens, uh, we oftentimes see upticks in export markets uh, and remember, trading futures involves risk and is not uh, trading futures involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. And everything I talk about here today is just my own opinion and not a direct trade recommendation. Um, so the dollar index today weakening a little bit, getting back below that 18-day moving average. Uh, we had a pretty big update yesterday, uh, a dollar rally. Uh, on the back of, uh, you know, bouncing, I think, off that 55-day moving average down at 93.35 uh, there, and that trend line support uh, that you can find here on the chart uh, as well. 100-day uh, moving average down right below there at 92.89 with the 200-day moving average down around 92. Uh, we're going to see if the dollar index can continue to hold on to its strength here, or is the market going to, you know, continue to roll over, as I think it might be. Uh, and are we going to start to find a top uh, given the 94.50 to 96 area uh, up here at these highs? That was a big resistance zone that if the dollar fails at, we could see a resumption of the downtrend uh, that we were in last year. And, you know, that might mean for, uh, you know, some of our commodities like soybeans um, might mean a good reason that we pick ourselves up at these, this point. Might be a reason that we see an uptick in the export markets. Uh, and hopefully, you know, flash sales like we saw today, 132,000 metric tons uh, this morning announced by the USDA uh, of new flash sales to China uh, might be starting of that export pace this time of year that we expect to see uh, and continue to confirm um, confirm uh, a harvest slow potentially forming here. So the January 22 uh, soybean market here, the 200-day moving average up around 1291. We are firmly below that level. Uh, the $13 mark, uh, I think we're going to be heading up towards a test of it from here. Uh, we got inside price action that occurred for the last couple of days there, um, Thursday and Friday. That was all inside of Wednesday's rather large outside day. Today, another almost doji close, a slight red close, but the reality is, is that it was a pretty big outside day to the upside. Uh, well, we started off lower. We held support. Uh, and we we traded higher uh, almost to two day <coughs> excuse me two day highs uh, before settling back into the range uh, and right around that 1250 area. Uh, this consolidation here it, we're, we're building up uh, for a move. I think a continuation higher and a test towards 1280 to 1290 and really more towards 13 dollars. Um, breaking of that trend line uh, against the highs I think will be the start of another significant rally higher uh, like we saw this time last year and again this time last year. We're right where my crosshairs are on this chart, where uh, that October uh, through November time frame, we found a low uh, for the harvest time frame. Uh, and then we subsequently, into the end of the year, uh, found a two, two to three dollar rally, right, uh, for the rest of that January contract. Uh, and that's something that I would love to see continue this year. And I uh, kind of think that we're setting up the pattern for, but we're starting to see now those export markets to drive. The fundamental forces behind this uh, and I would like to see uh, the technicals here start to you know give us a reason to be more bullish other than you know a little bit of a trend line against the lows and some other small reasons uh, to maybe uh, have some faith here uh, in this market. So with that being said let's take a look at the four hour chart and start breaking down the smaller time frame here for soybeans in the January contract. <clears throat> Again, lots of trend lines here, all those yellow lines against the highs here, forming a cluster of resistance between 1260 to 12, 1300. Uh, but we're really more concerned at this time what's going on uh, off of this low here from 1195 that we made back in, um, back in October. That was a uh, significant low, maybe a harvest time frame low. 
full 50% retracements uh, from that 11.95 low to the 12 uh, 58 highs that occurred just a week later. We pulled back in that 12.27 area. We've held there as support, uh, and we expect ourselves in some kind of swing here up towards a negative 23 or 12.73, the negative 23.6% target at 12.73. We expect the market to be trying to go towards that way. But obviously, the last couple of days, we've had some inside price action. Uh, we had that big um, you know, day that started lower, closed high, or, or banged out higher, and then ended up settling uh, lower, but basically a, a big outside day against the prior prior day. Uh, we then had two inside days against that price action here uh, between 12.40 and 12.60. Uh, that was Thursday, Friday. And here today to start November, started off a little lower, held the support though, basically from last week. Uh, and then uh, right around 12.35, then rallied back up for a test of 12.60 here this morning. Unable to break out, but if we do, I think that we've built up enough, uh, built up enough resistance here that if we break through, uh, the market won't have much in the way until it tested a key psychological $13 figure. And at this point, I don't know if it stops because I also have faith that we're going to continue to see those export markets come in. We're going to continue to see the dollar to weaken uh, and give us those other signals uh, that, and trade winds to help uh, perpetuate this market at this time. Because again, last year it took, this is what it took the market up towards a test of beans in the teens. Uh, then we had a weather market and some uh, other reasons throughout this year's production to, to go above and test a breakout of above beans in the teens. We then started to realize that maybe we didn't have as much of the weather concerns that we, that we originally anticipated and production was going to come out better than, than it did midsummer. So we backed off. We tested the idea of beans in the teens again. The downside breaking below. It looks like this market doesn't want to stay down there. It looks like it wa it's very comfortable being a beans in the teens mentality, uh, you know, trading in inversions and trading in, in, a, in a bullish fundamental market. Uh, and into next year's planting season, into next March, we're going to be having a pricing range that I think we're carving out the low end of um, that is going to be above 12, but below maybe, you know, 15 or maybe even 16, uh, maybe probably below 15. I, it's going to be hard for us to break out of those prior highs without some other weather concerns. But Brazil could easily come in here if China uh, hasn't eaten their fill of Brazilian exports just yet. And we have other Brazilian concerns uh, in terms of weather. We could easily see more demand shift to the U.S. Uh, and certainly see that uh, take its toll on our futures. And that would cause a little bit more of a bid than we've been seeing in this market. So lots of reasons that we could catch now additional, uh, additional uh, move higher. Uh, and hey, if we've seen the biggest uh, balance sheet numbers then for the whole year as well here in this last report, um, I think that it's going to be an interesting uh, interesting year for carryouts as well still, even though we've gotten a little bit bigger on that balance sheet equation. So, you know, not much to talk about here on a 15-minute chart. Uh, today's price action, very reminiscent of these prior, <coughs> excuse me, two days that sold off around the 9.30 time frame uh, in the morning. Uh, found a bottom though, but settled basically back towards the middle of the range. Uh, good opening range for the month of November so far. I think of breaking out to the upside above 1260, which certainly turned a forward bullish. And I think this market has been very competitive in holding the support, but generally speaking, still a range here that we're trying to break out from, uh, I think, at this time. So let's flip over now to our December corn. On the daily time frame, what a beautiful chart this is, breaking above. Uh, trend line resistance. It does almost doesn't matter how you draw it at this point. Uh, you're 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 breaking above some kind of resistance line. If you're not drawing it, then you probably weren't watching it. Uh, we had cle clearly an inflection zone down here around five dollars that we have held. That's going to be a key level now going forward uh, in corn. Five dollar corn is essentially the thirteen dollar mark for beans or the beans in the teens mentality. Five dollar corn. Obviously, the market is very comfortable with the price above it at this time. Uh, so December corn trading back up to 579 today, breaking above trend line resistances. Uh, I, you know, at some point, a pullback to test these broken resistances as support uh, around the 550 to 560 area is probably um, likely. Uh, but at this time, we can't uh, can't exactly uh, bet on that happening. You got to wait for it and be ready for it when it happens. 100 day moving average. Uh, around 544, 55-day moving average around 535. Probably going to turn up and get that bullish crossover above the 100-day here with this move we've just seen. 200-day moving average now down around 524 and coming up higher. The 18-day moving average at 539. 
all of those way below us now. We, we, we really tightened up in the corn market here. We, we were spending a lot of time inside of a range where all those moving averages came. Uh, it consolidated here together. Now we're starting to trend higher. We're going to see these spread out, uh, you know, and you're going to see them look more like they did back here. when We had a big old trending market, right? They'll start leading up. And, uh, and I can tell you right now, I don't think corn's done going higher just because that 18-day moving average is still not above even the 100-day. So we got some climbing to do. Um, with that being said, or at least some time to spend up at this area to drag it up. Uh, with that being said, um, let's take a look at that four-hour chart because not much more uh, more to say. I think now that we have a pretty clear trend higher here on those daily uh, candles here in, in one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green closes in a row uh, with six of those here of higher highs and higher lows over the last uh, week or so. I think it's a pretty important or pretty impressive uh, thing to uh, shoot. Didn't mean to switch the chart there. It'll come switch and switch back on me. But in the meantime, let's talk about what we're looking at here on a four-hour chart for December corn. Obviously, starting to break above that old October high. Uh, right away to here to start. Uh, the chart will come back here in a minute. There it is. Uh, right away to start the month of October, November uh, is pretty, pretty bullish. Um, full 50% retracement, though, from the October low now to the November high or the entire swing that we're tracking. Uh, here over the last couple of weeks is from a 506 low up to 582. So maybe around 544. I don't know if we're ever going to see uh, us get back down to that low of a level. Uh, my most aggressive fib that I'd be looking at are basically lows of today and the lows of the month. I'd be maybe a buyer down around 564 in the December corn, you know, uh, looking for it to stay above 560. Um, but, um, but mainly uh, my concerns are going to be where is this, whatever this trend line is, uh, we were breaking uh, above the highs. Uh, you know, where is the test of that? And that's down around 550. So I think it's a pretty high probability of getting a test of the 560 to 550 area. So I might wait in that case to be a buyer uh, on a test back down to that area. But generally speaking, uh, you know, I think corn's in a mentality of you have to buy the dips here. Um, those dips could be 20 cents and take you down to a test of the, below the month of November's low so far. But that's part of the risk here in this uptrend. Uh, but if it is going to be a continued uptrend within a day or two or even half a day, you'll probably see a retracement back in your favor uh, or, or maybe even a move to new highs. So here over the next, uh, you know, a 15 minute chart is pretty bland. Uh, it's really trend lines against the prior lows. Every day has been higher highs and higher lows. You're going to look for that type of trend to continue intraday uh, here. Most of these days, any prior day is low to the new day is high. Uh, look for the 50% levels to potentially hold. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, is that this has been a pretty strong trend on the four hour time frame. Uh, and I think you can trade it from there probably more effectively. Um, uh, it, and that's something that, um, you know, you'll have to, we'll have to continue to, to monitor. Um, but, uh, you know, last week, and I know in the strategy of the week webinar, we were looking at some 560, 610 call spreads the week before we were looking at a couple different ways to get long, just long corn, just outright with put protection. Uh, but those five, you know, 60, 610 call spreads in the Jan, uh, you know, are now deep in the money. Uh, they're off of obviously the March contract, so they're uh, uh, so they've got um, a little bit of a different spread on them, but or, or price because they're off the March. Um, but uh, you can see how now this this push we've seen here today um, over the last uh, couple of days <laughs> and today today is additional 10 cents to that big push uh, has taken that in just a week. Um, into profitability, and there you go. Um, wish we didn't have those short calls, and that was something I talked about in the strategy that we, you know, you almost hope you say to yourself if you ever buy a call spread or buy a put spread, you almost you, at some point you're, you're going to inevitably be hoping you say to yourself, oh, I wish I didn't short uh, this call or this put against this other call or put um, because that's what's capping my gains at this time. Um, but that's okay. So let's take a look here at uh, December wheat. Let's take a look at the wheat markets before we wrap things up here today. Just wanted to give a quick row crop update because it's been interesting to watch uh, corn so well bid, beans putting up such a fight here. Uh, and actually, that's taking that corn to bean ratio down, you know, down to that 2.0 area uh, and, uh, and normalizing uh, that a little bit here. We, we got as wide as 2.6 to 2.8 in the corn to bean ratio, and that's just the price of beans divided by the price of corn, right? 
Uh, and it's supposed to gauge some kind of relative value of the acres, right, that you put towards to work there to give you an idea of what you should, um, obviously what you should do pricing wise or, or acres wise for pricing. Um, either way, um, traditionally we're in the 2.0 to 2.2 area. Uh, we got really wide on that up to 2.8. Uh, and now it's come back down to those more normal levels. Well, maybe I think in this environment, the strong demand for beans from China, uh, and uh, until we see upticks in ethanol demand and maybe uh, a less than uh, big oil loving um, EPA um, and uh, USDA, maybe we, we won't see much more. But let's get into wheat. Trend line support against the lows. Big, beautiful rainbow in our moving averages here. Wheat looks parabolic and breaking out above $8. It probably takes Chicago wheat. To nine or ten here if we really really continue this parabolic move higher uh, so it's gonna it's it's a commit or quit uh, moment here for wheat given that Minneapolis spring wheat is at 1075 KC hard red winners at 806 already I believe Chicago's contract has what it takes to probably get above the eight dollar figure here pretty big breakout though happening uh, and if it doesn't break out from here it could be a big fail failure and roll over but but that's something to uh, watch very closely here in the near term uh, as wheat continues uh, its march higher. So December wheat here on the four hour chart. Uh, if you look back here, I'll highlight a 50% fib here. It was drawn from 677 up towards 6, 763. It's just the low there from uh, September to the highs uh, of early October. A 50% fib held around 720. Uh, that has gone to its negative 23.6% retracement. And after it did, it didn't give much of a pullback. It only pulled back. Uh, you know, from 780, actually, it didn't even pull back once it traded. It's gone straight through. Because it's going through either way, the point is, is that, okay, that FIB is off the charts, uh, literally. Uh, and now we might have support from, uh, drawn from the highs to new highs. This is a, an aggressive setup that uh, if we start to cascade higher, uh, look for support around 780 uh, on Chicago wheat here. The full 50% FIB, though, uh, from 712 up to... Uh, eight dollars now uh, look for support um, around 756 there in a full 50 percent or, or the next of the series 50 percent fib and then of course a full 50 percent fib from that sec 677 low up to the eight dollar high look for 740 would be our next supportive area uh, if and when uh, it you know might trade or come uh, but we will see what happens and again down here around 750 uh, for December wheat, we've also got that trend line uh, against the highs here that we've broken out of the trend, broken trend line uh, resistance now trading as support if it comes down. But truthfully, I think that at this point, wheat's uh, uh, in a short covering rally that there's no telling where the technical high is going to be. And we're going to just keep price rallying or price rationing higher uh, to try to keep it off of the international market. So. With all that being said, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed today's strategy of the day update. Do join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. for my strategy of the week webinars. Sign up in the links below to receive the email to get access to that webinar every week. And, of course, the live access to the link to the live viewing. You can always give me a reach over here or a call over here at Zaner at 312-277-0110. Find me on Twitter or again, SOTD on Facebook or shoot me an email. Love hearing from you guys and want to always make the strategy of the day update uh, what you want to see. So have a great day, everybody. And with all of that being said, we'll be back with you as price action develops. Take care.